you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Prime Minister for a copy of the statement before we, we met here this afternoon. We're in an extremely serious and unprecedented situation. The government has lost control of events and is in complete disarray. Yes. It's been evident for weeks that the Prime Minister's deal did not have the confidence of this House. Right. Yet she ploughed on regardless, reiterating this is the only deal available. Can she be clear with the House? Is she seeking changes to the deal or mere reassurances? Does she therefore accept the statement from the European Commission at lunchtime saying that it was the only deal possible, we will not renegotiate, our position has not changed? Ireland's Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, has said it is not possible to renegotiate the Irish border backstop, stating that it was the Prime Minister's own red lines that made the backstop necessary. Exactly. Exactly. So can the Prime Minister be clear? Is she now ready to drop further red lines in order to make progress? Yeah. Mr Speaker, can the Prime Minister confirm that the deal presented to this House is not off the table but will be represented with a few assurances. Mm -hmm. Bringing back the same botched deal either next week or in January, and can she be clear on the timing, will not change its fundamental flaws and deeply held objections right across this House, which go far wider than the backstop alone. Yes. Mr Speaker, this is a bad deal for Britain, a bad deal for our economy and a bad deal for our democracy. Our country deserves better than this. Yes. The real damage... The, the deal... The deal damages our economy, and it isn't just the opposition saying that. The government's own analysis shows this deal would make us worse off. Yeah. If the Prime Minister cannot be clear that she can and will renegotiate a deal, then she must make way. Yes. Yes. And if she is and, Mr Speaker, if she is going back to Brussels, then she needs to build a consensus in this House. Yes. And since it appears business has changed for the next two days, then it seems not only possible but necessary that this House debates the negotiating mandate that the Prime Minister takes to Brussels. Exactly. There is no point, no point at all, in this Prime Minister bringing back the same deal again, which clearly does not support the, is not supported by this House. Yep. Mr Speaker, we've endured two years of shambolic negotiations. Yes. Red lines which have been boldly announced, then cast aside. Yep. We're now on our third Brexit secretary, and it appears each one of them has been excluded from these vital negotiations. We were promised a precise and substantive document and got a vague 26-page wish list. And they've become the first government ever in British history to be held in contempt of Parliament. The government is in disarray. Uncertainty is building for business. People are in despair at the state of these failed negotiations and concerned about what it means about their jobs, their livelihood and their communities. And the fault for that lies solely at the door of this shambolic government. The Prime Minister is trying to buy herself one last chance to save this deal. If she doesn't take on board the fundamental changes required, then she must make way for those who can. I hope I can respond fairly uh, briefly to the Right Honourable Gentleman. The Right Honourable Gentleman appeared to argue, on one hand, that it wasn't possible to change the deal because the EU had said this was the only deal, and on the other hand, that the only thing he would accept was the deal being renegotiated. No, the Right Honourable Gentleman quoted the European Union as saying this was the only deal, and then goes on to say that the whole deal needs to be renegotiated. This is the, the fundamental question that members of this House have to ask themselves is whether they wish to deliver Brexit and honour the result of the referendum. 
If you wish to deli- all the analysis shows that if you wish to deliver Brexit, if you wish to honour the result of the referendum, then the deal that does that, that best protects jobs and our economy, is the deal that is on that the government has put forward. That everybody will have his or her chance. But the questions have been put and the answers must similarly be heard. The Prime Minister. That is the fundamental question for members of this House. To deliver on and honour the result of the referendum, but to do it in a way that protects jobs and our economy, and that is what this deal does. The right honourable gentleman talks about a number of issues. He, he wants to be in the customs union such that free movement would have to, and the single market and free movement would have to be accepted. He refuses to accept that any deal requires a backstop because that's our commitment to the people of Northern Ireland. He claims he wants to negotiate trade deals, yet wants to be in the customs union, fully in the customs union, that will not enable us to negotiate those trade deals. And finally, he says about the uncertainty, he says about uncertainty for British business. I can tell the right honourable gentleman that the biggest uncertainty for British business lies not in this deal, but on the front bench of the Labour Party.